stocks. Investing is all about beating out the competition, and my next guest has a proven track record of doing exactly that. Joining me now with his investment strategy and some stock ideas, we have Matthew McLennan. He is a portfolio manager at First Eagle Funds. His fund has outperformed 94% of its peers year to date and 97% of his peers over the past five years. And he's approximately $35 billion worth of assets under management. Matt McLennan, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Good to see you, Pam. So just for people that don't understand the investment philosophy, the value, the discipline, the long-term approach, maybe just give us a little hint into what you do go through. Well, for us at First Eagle, the first and most important step in any investment is to make sure that we avoid the permanent impairment of capital. So price is key. Uh, we want a margin of safety. Um, there's no one on the team who thinks that they can predict the future with certainty. So we're always looking for not only a low price, but a margin of safety in the behavior of the underlying management teams. And if you can get the right price and the right behavior, and if you can afford to take the long-term view, uh, that's been the recipe that's helped us over the long term. So does that mean that you have actual meetings where someone says, all right, but let's consider what could go wrong, and then you go through a list of all the things that could go wrong, and as long as you deal with them, then you can move forward? We're certainly in the business of seeing what can go wrong. Um, if you want to avoid uh, permanent payment of capital, you have to make a habit of asking questions uh, about what can go wrong. And uh, we have the benefit, I guess, as a team of having experienced many cycles um, and having seen on a global level uh, the sorts of things that can go wrong at the company levels, at the industry level, uh, and at the macro level. And we try to uh, avoid those areas of the market where there's most complacent expectations as evidenced by high valuations and we try to avoid the hottest segments of the market where there's negative free cash flow where companies are really expanding too quickly uh, to be sustainable well you certainly have focused on an area i know you want to talk about having to do with japan that has turned a lot of investors off for many years but indeed you've been prospecting there for quite a while and you've had the patience Patience is critical for us at First Eagle. Uh, we were uh, actually out of Japan in the late 1980s, and that was a difficult decision at the time because Japan was the hot dot uh, in the late 1980s. Uh, it was only in the mid-1990s that we came back into Japan, and some of the investments that we made back then we still own today. And you know, patience for us is our core competitive advantage. Uh, you know, we like to plant seeds and watch the trees grow, and that's something we do a little bit differently at First Eagle the most. All right, I also get to sort of make the pun that you get the dry, you get the cycle by some of the the various trends because I know one of the companies you're focused on is Shimano and they make the gear change uh, the, the gears for for bicycles why Shimano well Shimano is um, a very well-run company uh, we've owned Shimano for over a decade as um, typical of the sort of long-term investments that, that First Eagle would make in a portfolio. Uh, and if you look at Shimano, they have, over time, gradually assumed a dominant market position in their own markets. The braking components for bicycles, um, gear changes, derailers, and the like. Um, they're over half of the high-end market for that uh, segment of the world bicycle market. And often people know Shimano as a brand better than they know the actual bicycle names. And for us, that's an interesting business to own, because in a world where where you're uncertain of the future, you know that Shimano is going to own that slice of spending globally for a long period of time. Uh, furthermore, uh, they have no debt. Um, they've been shareholder oriented. They've bought back about a third of their stock in the last decade. And we've owned it at a, a conservative valuation over time. Another company in Japan, I know you've been following, Fanuc, also a leader in robotics and automation. Again, you know, what we look for is eclectic royalties that tend to dominate their own sub-industries. Uh, Fanuc is world leader in robotics uh, and also the servo motors that go into com uh, computer numerically controlled machines. Uh, this high-end sort of intellectual property is required at pretty much every modern factory floor. Um, as Japan industrialized in the 70s and 80s, the demand for that equipment was enormous. Uh, we think that for China, and India to go through a high-end industrialization process, they're going to need the kind of equipment uh, that Fanuc makes. In fact, we bought a, a lot of Fanuc uh, in the midst of the economic crisis, uh, when it was being priced for declines. Uh, but the beauty of Fanuc, as opposed to many other more economically sensitive businesses, is that it had no debt. Again, net cash. So in terms of focusing on how not to lose money, uh, we did not have to be right on the timing of the recovery, only on the fact that their prospects would get better over time at some point in the future. Matt McLennan, appreciate your thoughts coming to us from First Eagle, telling us about Shimano. I love that. Bicycles and automation equipment. Fano, thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. it.